Hey there, guys. It's Rick Houston here with Airgun Web, your home for old school Airgun reviews and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Today, we're here shooting the Air Venturi Avenger Bullpup. Why? Well, I'll tell you in just a minute. All right, guys, before we get started, I want to say thank you to Pyramid Air. They've been a sponsor, a really amazing sponsor for Aragon Web since 2009. That's when I actually started doing this work. It's been a lot, a lot of years, and it's been a lot of fun. But Pyramid Air has been like there from the beginning. And if you guys need an air gun, uh, compressor, pellets, scope, uh, anything that you need to shoot or the stuff that helps you shoot better, Check them out, www.pyramidair.com. So why are we looking at the Air Venturi Avenger? We've got the Avenger X coming, Rick. What are you doing with this? Well, I wanted to remind everybody how we got here. And we're also still in the middle of testing our most accurate 22 cal 18 grain pellet. So why not shoot the Avenger? This is a wonderfully nice gun. Now, I know I've said on the channel many times that bullpups aren't my thing. And here's my reason. The scopes, uh, flies. The scope on a bullpup, because of the way it's lined up, at least on this one, has to be really high. And for me, the center of gravity wants to teeter totter on me. Now, not everybody has that issue. That's sort of my thing. But hey, if you like bullpups and they shoot good for you and you enjoy the ergonomics, great. Uh, I prefer a rifle, but yet, hey man, if I'm shooting it and it's performing, I'll tell you what matters most to me uh, above looks above ergonomics and that's performance and when the gun performs as well as this thing does i sort of overlook things like oh the scope's a little high so we're going to jump right into it i've got our three pellets here which is uh we've got our 1813s from jsb um we've got our jts's and we've got our hns i got a new to the hns because we're gonna need them today um i've done a little teeny bit of shooting just to get our scope sighted and by the way we're running a really awesome scope. This is the Hawk Frontier 34, 34 millimeter tube. This is the five to 30. Yeah, it's a high end scope. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has one of the features that uh, impresses me probably more so than anything else. And that is I can go from five all the way to 30 and I can use that the full power of the magnification without it getting murky, blurry, or anything else. It stays clear from point A all the way to Z <laughs> and it is really good. Now, lesser expensive scopes, one inch tube scopes, that kind of stuff. You can get a six to 24 like Amazon scope and you crank it to 24 and all of a sudden you just can't hardly see anything or the eye relief's really hard to get locked in. Well, that's the difference between an entry level scope and something like this. This is not cheap. It's, well, it's, a, it's expensive. At least it's, it's expensive to me. And the, when you're talking about firearms optics, this actually sits like low to mid, actually price point wise. You can get some really expensive firearm scopes. They're very, very expensive. But for air gunners, $1,100, $1,200, that's a lot of money for us to spend on a scope. And this is between that 1000 to 1200 range. I don't remember the price exactly, but it's in that range. And that's a lot of money to spend on glass for an air gun. But if you want to be looking through something that's super clear, the Frontier 34s, I, at least last time I checked, it's the best Hawk has on their, uh, has for their offerings right now. So let's go ahead and get to some shooting. Um, the gun is stock as far as the power level goes. So just you guys know, these normally ship like with a reg at 2,900 PSI. I haven't touched it, so it's still there. That's too hot, frankly, in a 22. We're shooting 22s today. Um, I would back that down to somewhere Oh, probably 2100, 2200 PSI, but I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna run it stock, just like if you pulled it out of the box and you didn't have a chronograph and you're just gonna shoot it, this is what you'd be getting. So let's shoot it from there. Uh, and I haven't touched the trigger. I really don't think this needs the trigger messed with. It's that good. And we're at 52 yards today. So let's go ahead and get started. The conditions allow for us to shoot um, further today, which is awesome. All right, so we'll start with the at one threes. Oh, come here. And then we will move to the H&Ns and then we'll shoot the uh, JTSs. Now, the way we've been doing this, we're not looking at like a group, we're looking at several groups. So we're gonna shoot 
a couple ciders, make sure the scope is getting in the black, and then we're gonna shoot three five shot groups, and then look at those to see how each pellet performs. I'm gonna start with the upper left hand target. Okay, here we go, first shot. Low left. Okay, we're just gonna bring it to the right a little more. All right, we can work with that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and reload this so we can just shoot two five shot groups right in a row and then we'll get our last group. And then after this, I'll check my uh, pressure. I'll probably go top this off. I don't remember how many shots I get out of this because it's been a while, but um, the fill pressure is 4,300. The reg's sitting at three. We're at about 3,800 right now. So we got plenty of, plenty of air to, to do our first round of tests here. Okay, here we go. First shot group. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, okay. Now I could definitely just adjust the scope to bring that to center, but that's a doggone good group. Next shot group here. Squeaky. All right, here we go. Next five shot group. One. These are flying too fast, I'll tell you that right now. Two. Because they're not, they're not flying straight, they're a little bit unstable. Three. Four. Okay. Got our next five shots. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna have to get the crony out and dial this back a little bit because I'm watching those pellets just do the swirl thing. They're kind of a little bit wild. Um, and it's just because we're pushing too hard. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go with that. Okay. Last set here, and then we're going to move on to the H&Ns. Okay. Four. Five. Okay, that was better. Okay, we are just over three. So it's definitely time to top this off. I'm gonna go do that, I'll be right back. All right, so we are going to switch now to the H&Ns. We'll take a couple test shots, see where they're hitting. We're nice and full on our gun, so we'll see. I might could get um, the H&N and the JTSs on one fill. I'm pretty sure we can without a problem, but we'll just keep an eye on the pressure. We don't want to short any of the pellets. Let them do the best they can here. And if you guys want to see, I don't know, I don't know the last time I did a video on the Avenger, like a review on the bullpup, but if you guys want to see one, let me know. I maybe throw the ATN on it or something, and uh, we can do like a full review, but I haven't I haven't done one on this gun in a while. I pulled it out for Airgun Expo, and it was like out of an Airgun Pro Shop inventory item back when I owned the Pro Shop. So it's just been sitting on the wall. Um, so if you guys want to see a review of this, let me know. We'll do a review. Okay. We are going to go to the top, top center. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and take a shot. 
Oh, those flew more straighter. Take another one. Oh, that was terrible. Ooh, okay, we'll try again here. Okay, so we're shooting, we're hitting high. We'll do one more. Okay, so I know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna use my mill dots and adjust. We should be good to go. At least that first one was probably an oddball. It flew straight though, just not where we wanted. Didn't have that swirly thing going. I need to try and film that. I need to try and capture that so you guys know what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. First five shot group, center column. Whoa, I don't know what that was. No, that's just all over. That is terrible. Okay, that is just awful. How can we go from what we had above, which we had a bunch of them grouped just a little bit high, to that last group? That's crazy. Um, I'm going to try to put them on the bull. Just using my mill dots here, guys. Okay, yeah, I can I can definitely see that uh, the H and Ns are not are not happy, <laughs> not at all. That's interesting. All right, I'm gonna use that same hold. Essentially, I was holding one mil under and two mils left. Three, four, five. That was, those last two groups were not great. <laughs> I was trying to salvage something out of those, but I just don't think, yeah, the H and N's in this. Mm -mm. All right, so let's go now. I'm gonna switch over to JT. I'm not even gonna try and put that back on maybe because it's like acting funky. Oh, we got it. Okay, JTS, and I do have enough air. We're at 3,800, so we should be able to do this. Oh, those go in tight. I remember now, they're, they're larger. From everything I can tell, the JTS head size is just larger. Is that their secret sauce or not? I don't know. Oh, that squeaky noise. Okay. Top right for a cider. Wow. Went way to the right. Okay, let's see what our third shot looks like. All right, we're gonna give a shot here. That's not looking promising. And I think we're pushing too hard. I just think we're, we're driving a little too hard. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm going to use my mill dots to adjust 
and yeah, I'm just going to aim two mils left. Here we go. One. Two. Oh, those are swirling bad. They're whooping too. Three. Four. Five. Okay, they started to calm down. Um, those shot about one mil. We got a little wind coming up. Nice breeze. I'm going to aim a little less left. One. Two. See, here's the problem. I need wind to shoot straight. Pretty sure that's the, that's the deal. When it's calm, I can't seem to shoot straight. Give me some wind, I do better. That's funny. Three. Get off me, fly. Four. Five. Okay, now that was good group. That was a darn good group. This is odd. This has got me thinking, what's going on? Two, three, oops. Okay. This will be our last five shot group. We're just coming to the end of our reg, so this is perfect. We use the same hold. So I am just aiming left one mil. Actually, it's a quarter mil, I forgot. I'm, the, the reticle's like this big in the scope, so it's actually a quarter mil. I apologize. Oh no, that went way left. The wind isn't blowing. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh, they're swirling really bad. Okay. I shot. Yep. That's just too weird. Okay, guys. I'm going to go grab that target. Uh, and that is some, that is probably the weirdest results we've had so far. Um, yeah, that has just got me thinking what's going on. I'm going to go grab that. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So I will have my sister put a picture of this up. Come here so you guys can take a look at it. But if we look at the left side, as I'm looking here, JSB, I would go with JSB pellets right now. Now, I think we gotta dial this in. I think this is an example of an unoptimized gun. If we were to optimize this, take back the power a little bit, maybe go down to like 1800 PSI, uh, which to do that, remember on this gun, you gotta drain it and then bring the power up slowly and you can get it where you want it. I would start at like 1800, then go to 1900, go to 2000, go to 2100. And at some point it's not going to get any faster. So when you find the sweet spot there and also maybe crank the hammer spring in all the way. So max hammer spring and then bring the pressure up to where you are. We're not going any faster. Uh, and then decide, you know, what your crony numbers look like. And if you're pushing, if you're pushing high 900s or into a thousand foot per second, it's too fast. So then you want to start over and go back to 1800 and maybe find that sweet spot, shoot some groups and see where the pellets settle down because all of these pellets, even the JSPs, tended to have a swirl thing going. They weren't just true. They were not stable. Uh, and that was the case with all of them. I mean, every one of them. Uh, I would shoot JSBs in this here. This is our best option here, the left column. The H&Ns were hmm, kind of all over. Um, I was having to use bills. And the JTSs, while the groups are actually not bad, that group, that group, and that group, the group diameter isn't bad. They're probably the best 
of all of them, but they just don't hit the same place twice. So I don't know what's up with that. That's just, um, yeah, strange, strange thing. So I think that's kind of cool to learn what a gun will do uh, and then kind of think about what can we do to make it shoot better. Um, and it's all going to be get rid of these flies. I'm sure that's it. Um, but yeah, that was, that was kind of fun is I found it interesting that the best, oh, almost the best group I got was actually in the wind. Um, and then dead calm. I was kind of all over, uh, go figure. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it. Again, if you want to see a full review on this, maybe, uh, you want to watch me kind of go through the process of, you know, draining it, setting the reg, that kind of stuff, I'll do it. Just let me know in the in the comments and we'll make that happen. I definitely want to say thank you to Pyramid Air for sponsoring Ergon Web and these videos. Again, they've been a sponsor for a very long time. And frankly, we wouldn't be, still be here if it wasn't for them. So when you're looking for your next air gun, your compressor, scope, pellets, all of that stuff, check them out, www.pyramidair.com. That's going to be it for now. My name is Rick Utzer here with Airgun Web, your home for old school air gun reviews. And we tell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks for watching.